Well, good afternoon again. And it is a good afternoon, actually. Oh dear. I'm trying to do that car work Monday. I did it. I was poorly again this morning, but in mind. You know, some people don't accept disability and ill health. I'm afraid I have to. Not to worry. Anyway, I'm alright now. That's the main thing. Now, yesterday, I did try um, on that electrical video, electrical switch video. Uh, I did try to, to explain this, but uh, the video was too long. I didn't do a very good job. But I thought it interesting enough just to tell you about it. And that's three phase electricity. Now, in this country, we have three uh, single phase electricity, it's 240 volts at 50 cycles a second. If you allow me, I'll just demonstrate. Right, I will use my lamp that I made, my electric meter lamp. Still for sale, by the way, for £120, but it's got to be collected. I can't post it, it'll get smashed. So, look, that's the voltmeter. I'll turn it on. And I'm sure you can see. There we are. Right, the switch one on the lamp. Now, I'm sure you can see from that that our voltage in this country is. 240 give or take right and the frequency in this country it's 60 in America but it's 50 in this country now this uh, frequency meter I mentioned this before it came off a standby power supply for a cinema that was a thousand pound brand new in the 60s and I got it quite cheaply obviously but that meter alone um, is worth about 80 pounds so 24 frames a second is what normal television it's a lot more nowadays I know even this video you're watching I think is at 24 frames a second so because it was on a standby power supply, you can see that says frames per second and it's at 24, right? Which means it's 50 cycles a second. So that's our electricity supply. Now, three phase electricity. I hope you can see this now because I just did it and you couldn't see a thing. Anyway. So it's got to be slightly crooked. Right, you know how an alternator works. You've got a coil of wire and you've got a magnet that spins round. That's the north and that's the south and it's pivoted in the middle. Now as it spins round, obviously the magnetic flux, which it goes something like this, it gets to a maximum, then it gets to, it dies off to naught when it's at 90 degrees, and then it swaps polarity from positive to negative, and this one does the same. So you get alternating current, that's what it is. I'm sure you all know that. Now, with three phase, you have three coils of wire at 120 degrees, so you've got one at 240 there, because it says going that way around, it's alright. And one at 120 there. So as that spins round, you've got three coils of wire that's going on a sine wave. Say that is at one full turn of 360 degrees. So you've got a sine wave. And if you've got calculators and things, you can do this. So I've got to find the middle to start with. I've got to find a third and two thirds of that one and a third and two thirds of that one. 
So the first one, say that's the peak, and we draw a sine wave, and I, if you have compasses and things, you can do a lot better job than I can. Like I said, you're getting one of my masterpiece drawings. Right. And then you get another one here. That's a dumb. Done that wrong, ain't I? That's the middle. We've got that one has to go to the middle. Right, let's start that again. I'll do it here. Same thing. And we'll do the middle first, then I won't make a mistake, will I? So it goes like that. And it goes like that. Then a third of the way along, you have another one, which goes, as I say, excuse me drawing, it's not to scale, it's pretty wrong actually, like that, and like that. And then, of course, another third the way along, you've got another one, which goes to there. Like I said, it would do, we did this with compasses and things at college, and I haven't got them, have I? Right. And that one wants to go like that, doesn't it? There we are. And we're right, I think so. Something like that. Right, as I said, excuse me, I mean, crap drawings, because they're not very good. Are they? That one tails off more like that. Anyway, the point is, the whole point of this, is that When that's one sine wave and that's another one and that's another one. When you add these up they equal zero. This is the important bit. This is, if you like, the mag magical bit right, of why we have three phase electricity because when you add all these up no matter where in any 360 degrees it equals zero current the negatives always equal the positives and that's why we all have the electricity that we do alternating current obviously so what they can do is at the power station I'll draw it a little bit bigger here so you might be able to see it. Right, you've got three coils again. Same three coils in a different thing. They're a bit more complicated than this in the power station. Anyway, what you do, you take the end of these three wires, what they do at the power station, they take the end of these three wires and they join them together. And it doesn't matter because you've no current flow. And they stick it in the ground. That's earth. See? And these three are your three phase wires. Now, motors and that use three phases, but we use one phase. And in this country, as I've shown you, that is 240 volts at 50 cycles. See? That means it's spinning around, swapping over 50 times a second. So, what you do, you put a house on that one, 
Look, I'll draw you a fantastic drawing of a house. How about that? There you are. That's a house there. You've got another house here. Which you put on that phase. And you've got another house here. They're all different shapes. Well, you don't all have the same, do you? It'd be boring. And that is connected to that. So what actually happens in the real world is that the positives and negatives flowing, the alternating current, flow between these three houses from the alternator at the power station. That's, I'm trying to keep this very, very simple. So you've got three live wires that come in, you've got one live wire, sorry, that comes into your house. But of course, when you see you wire a plug up, which I can do here, so you've got your power plug that plugs into your sockets, and you've got an earth wire, you've got a live wire, and you've got a neutral wire. But the neutral wire is actually the same as the earth wire. There's no difference. If you try it if you want, I have done, you can wire live to earth and it's exactly the same as live to neutral. Only you've got to bypass your consumer unit. Now, the problem is with 240 volts, just say that that is a wire, a bare wire in the house with 240 volts on and I've no protection. So if I get hold of that, because it's alternating current, what happens is it contracts your muscles and you can't let go. And after either a few seconds or a minute or whatever, it kills you. <laughs> That's true. That's why we have all this protection. Now if you have 110 volts, it doesn't kill you. So why do you have 240 volts? Is because the electricity lines coming from the power station can be a lot thinner than 110, right? So that's why we have 240 volts and why we've got to have so much protection on our electrical equipment. So how it works, in effect, right, we'll just show you quite quickly if I can. In the house, now I fitted one here because it didn't have one. We really did the electrics when the apprentice electrician in, I don't know, 87 or something. That's a consumer unit. Now at the consumer unit, and we're talking about only the live and neutral, we're not worried about the earth because the earth can go to anywhere. The earth's just an extra safety nowadays. It used to, it didn't used to be. You used to have an earth trip, what they call an earth trip. And uh, if the live went to earth, it literally tripped the electrics and it saved people's lives. But, especially in town, that the um, wires are underground, you've got such a good earth, it doesn't go through the earth trip, it goes straight to that and it doesn't switch it off. So, they've brought these consumer units out. And what happens is, you've got two wires going to it, like that, which is alive and a neutral. Now, remember it's at 50 cycles, so we have 50 cycles going in, and we have 50 cycles going out. And what this does, what your consuming it does, is count those cycles to make sure there's 50 going in and 50 returning. But if for some reason, say you're making toast in the morning, Right, another fantastic drawing coming up, look. Toaster. O-A. I'm talking and not thinking. Right. And you've got your two wires going to the socket. There's your live and neutral, right. 
and you spin round at breakfast time and you knock it in the sink which is full of water now your sink will be earthed simply from the fact of the water pipes so what happens is these 50 cycles going in disappear to earth so you get either none or only a few coming out it doesn't matter how many that's irrelevant right somewhere between 0 and say 48 right because we don't know the if it's soapy water or how conductive it is right so your consumer unit checking your 50 cycles in and out notices you've got a difference and so it switches off so it saves your life and that's how three phase electricity works why we have it and uh, why everyone uses it anyway So just to finish off, I hope you like that uh, quick demonstration and explanation. I've tried to keep it simple. Um, and thanks ever so much, by the way, for your comments on the uh, electrical foot switch yesterday. I was quite surprised and obviously very pleased with your interest, which is why I thought I would uh, I would do this, you know just to show you something and the other thing just to tell you quickly at the weekend now I'm not sure what's happening it's I, I just don't know because I don't know how I'm going to be I don't know how what the weather's going to be and I don't know what I can do so I was hoping to go to the tractor and uh, either another little jaunt or maybe you know there's some equipment there we might be able to use or look at or I don't know so that's really why I'm doing this today, because I, as I say, I don't know what's happening the weekend. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it, and look forward to hearing your comments as ever, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon.